test. So, um, so today's schedule is, um, today's schedule is first we'll finish off, um, analyzing. So the last bit of, uh, uh stochastic gradient descent, then, uh, we'll spend some time talking about the midterm. Um, since this is an upper division class. I think the exam is more about uh, whether if we grasp the idea of uh, the whole theory, because uh, uh, we already we already uh, get some exercises uh, trying the homework, you know, reading the code and stuff. So um, our main goal of this class is, uh, for example, one of the main goal is to make us be able um, to code a PyTorch model uh, for our research and train it, you know, using Google Colab or Kaggle Cloud. Um, so, I mean, the the exam is just a um, just a test whether we grasp some basic um, concepts about, for example. Uh, what is a neural network? How do we train them? And uh, etc. cetera. Um, so today first, uh, we'll finish off uh, this last bit of uh, SGD. This how do we choose uh, the learning rate? How do we choose the step size? And then, um, so uh, we'll talk a, a bit about uh, the uh, midterm. Um, so for the next week, Monday, we don't have any class. So uh, on Tuesday, um, apparently I did, I think my office hour is on Thursday. So on Tuesday, uh, I hold a, like a, a live Q and A session during afternoon, um, like on Piazza. Uh, so, uh, if you have question, you just ask on Piazza, I'll answer it in real time. Um, and on Wednesday, so on Wednesday, uh, we'll do this, uh, so midterm review, uh, it has uh, some, you know, coding part. And on Wednesday, uh, we will demonstrate uh, what it is like uh, for some of the problem um, that's gonna be featured in uh, the midterm. And later today, uh, we'll have a pilot test. The pilot test is just for, um, you know, for test of the setting. So uh, we'll use a responders lockdown browser if you have, uh, being in our 449 class, you know what it's like. And we're using the practice system uh, by uh, responders. So um, we have to show our student ID to the camera, etc. cetera. But, uh, but still it's an, it, it's an open book uh, exam and uh, um, some external domain will be enabled if you have notes in the cloud. Uh, for example, please upload it to box. So, I mean, I will wash your box. <laughs> Uh, so uh, you have an access to the to the box, okay? And uh, <coughs> sorry, so let's back to the SGD, okay? And uh, um, so last time, last time we talked about uh, how do we improve SGD? Is we simply we uh, choose a variable learning rate. It means we change learning rate as um, the iteration goes by. So if we run more iterations, um, if we are closer and closer to the best possible neural network, so this is our, you know, the weights representing the neural network. If we are closer and closer to the best neural network, we should uh, decrease our um, like learning rate, right? And uh, uh, we'll see that in the uh, in the final project some trial. Okay. Um, so, and then we uh, we copy and paste this error equation of uh, um, stochastic gradient descent. So, for example, this is the error of the next iteration. And like I said, we don't have to memorize any formula, and we derived that we have a factor 
of one minus alpha k mu. Mu is a strong convexity, so mu is a strong convexity constant, and uh, um, and alpha k is our learning rate, or say the step size of every step. Uh, we assume that we choose we choose alpha small enough so that this term is less than one. So the square is less than itself. Because if, so normally, normally initially we observe, uh, you know, our loss function, the value blows up is because our learning rate is not small enough. So normally we choose, uh, first we test some small enough learning rate, for example, in the PyTorch package, the default, a learning rate is 10 to the negative third power. And then uh, we have another term. So this M is how close the gradient of a single sample to the overall average gradient. It's essentially asking us whether this sample is a representative of a data set, whether this sample is an outlier or not. Okay, so sometimes the outlier will divert, you know, deviate the training process. And that's something we don't like. Um, so now what happens is uh, uh, we choose a variable. So we choose a variable uh, step size, or say the variable learning rate, uh, alpha k. And the natural thinking is we wanna minimize uh, the right-hand side. So. We minimize the right-hand side with respect to alpha, and we just choose alpha small enough such that this is true, like I said. So we can simplify this square to be one minus uh, alpha k mu. Then we just take derivative. So I think, let me uh, write it more explicitly. So we have right-hand side is less than or equal to one minus All right, and now we take derivative with respect to alpha k. So what happens is we just do, so the new right-hand side, okay. So we call this a new right-hand side. So now we take derivative of alpha k with respect to this uh, new right-hand side, all right? We wanna minimize this thing because as we can see, this is a quadratic function of alpha, if we think about it. Um, so that's why we need to simplify this to a linear term. If it's a quadratic uh, function of alpha, it means quadratic function is like this. If M is positive, M is like a, a positive term because it's a square. So let's review what M is. M is a expectation of the square of gradient different. Let's see if we have this M. Oh, where was M? I think M was way before. Yeah, right here. Okay, so M is, uh, is an upper bound of uh, the sample the gradient of a single sample of the overall average uh, gradient. So the gradient of overall loss is, uh, the, the same thing as the average of, uh, of every single sample's loss. So uh, it's a positive number. And uh, okay, let's back here. So now what we have is minus, if we take derivative, we have minus mu um, this term plus two alpha k m. So next is we basically uh, set it to be zero. Um, so for example, um, if we set it to be zero, okay, set this to be zero. It's how we find the critical point. Uh, we treat alpha as a variable. So this tells us alpha is, uh, alpha is mu divided by 2m um, times e to the, uh, not e to the, sorry, the expectation of, uh, um, so this is our neural network at kth iteration, and this is the best possible neural network. 
Okay. Essentially, we're estimating uh, how this term decrease because this is a constant. Okay, so this is a constant. Um, Uh, we may have this question: Why m is a constant? M is like the the overall upper bound. So if we uh, if we uh, if we scroll back a bit, um, so this m this m is for any sample. Okay, so m is an upper bound for any sample. That is uh, the single uh, sample's uh, gradient uh, subtract the average gradient. So it's uh, it's an upper bound of that. Um, so that's that's why it's a constant. Okay, so this is a constant. Uh, the the main thing, the main task of uh, uh, today's lecture is we want to estimate how how this term, um, how this term is gonna like uh, converge. And last time, uh, I gave us a spoiler, that is, uh, this is uh, inverse proportional to k. So that's uh, that's a spoiler. So, but now let's still let's uh, let's uh, still derive it. So we let, oops, sorry. So we let, okay, row sub k is defined as this expectation. That is the ex expectation of. That is the expectation of the best possible neural network to subtract our current iterations neural network. All right. Um. And then what happens is, then what happens is if we look back at uh, uh, at where at the equation we started off, okay, we define this as rho k, right? Then this is rho k plus one, okay. So now let me mark this equation. Let's call this equation equation E. This is uh, uh, like the error equation of uh, the SGD. Okay. So now E becomes rho k plus one less than. Again, we uh, we we change uh, we 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 change this uh, uh, square just to um, just to the linear. Because we have assumed that, so we assume so here. Uh, we assume uh, one minus alpha k mu square is less than one minus alpha k mu. So we can replace the square by the linear term. Um, it's also a necessary condition for contraction because we want our uh, factor in front of uh, rho k to be uh, less than one. All right, and next is uh, um, if we look at if we look at this uh, expression, we we had right here. So our alpha k th this is like a this is like a recursive somewhat rec recursive reasoning of using uh, this alpha k. So for example, if we let rho k to be this guy, then uh, alpha k is nothing but mu divided by two m uh, rho k, right? And now we just plug in this alpha k uh, right here, and then we try to simplify it. Okay, so now let's do it. Um, so it's gonna be one minus mu divided by two m uh, rho k mu. So, uh, and then uh, times rho k plus alpha k square mu, 2m rho k square times m. So now we just simplify um, this equation. Um, if we look at it, so uh, let's simplify it. Uh, it's going to be rho k. Um, it's going to be rho k. Uh, it's going to be rho k. Um, rho k uh, minus mu square, right? Mu square divided by 2m rho k square plus. 
So we have a 4m square, but with uh, one copy of m, it's canceled. So we have this mu square rho k square. And then uh, we're kind of happy because uh, uh, the, these two terms essentially uh, we can cancel it, right? Um, let me just move. Okay. So now we have uh, this is essentially equals one minus mu square divided by four m uh, rho k square. Sorry, this is rho k minus that, my bad. So it's uh, rho k minus mu squared divided by 4m rho k squared, okay. So this implies uh, rho k plus one is. If we, if we look at, if we look at uh, this, uh, this formula, we, we don't think about SG at all. We, th we think we're in the calculus class, okay? We think about uh, we're in a calculus class and the row is like a sequence, okay? And uh, we, we define, and what our goal is to, we wanna make the sequence converge to zero. And if we look at the formula of the sequence, the next entry, and first of all, let's, just assume this sequence is positive. Uh, every entry is positive. We look at the sequence. The next entry of the sequence is previous of the sequence subtract a quadratic term, okay? So now if we think about it, it's, it's quite interesting. And uh, um, So what happens is uh, um, we, we want to make like a few. Uh, so what we want to do is we kind of want to use this type of a recurring relation to derive. So for example, we know that, so we, we know that in calculus. So we know that in calculus, um, so this is a calculus question. This is really a calculus question. So uh, what is uh, rho case asymptotics, you know, based on this recurrent, recurrent, based on this recur recurrent relation, what is uh, uh, this rho case asymptotics? For example, is, uh, is rho k one over k square? is rho k one over k, is rho k one over uh, square root of k. So it, it's very like, uh, like a, a difficult calculus two problem where we're given a recurrent relation and we're figure out that sequences explicit uh, like formula. So here the trick is to, uh, here the trick is to use uh, Taylor. Uh, I think it, here the trick is to use power series, okay. So let's, uh, so the trick is to use power series. Uh, so if you're a fan of calculus, like optimization is like, a, is like a whole, like if you like series, the optimization is like various analyze, an, uh, analysis of a series. Okay, so first we invert it. Um, so for example, we'll have something like that. Okay. And then we pull out, we pull out, um, so we pull out this uh, row K. So one copy of row K. So we'll have, this is one over row K and what's left is gonna be this, okay. So let me, let me write down this formula explicitly so it's easier to illustrate. For example, this is one over one minus mu squared divided by four m uh, rho k. Okay. And here we have uh, um, here we have like uh, to make an estimation. That is. Uh, When rho k, so rho k is the expectation of the error at the kth iteration, okay? So when rho k is small enough, 
that means so this already maybe is already at uh, for example 0 0.1 level and multiply with after multiply with this we get a less than uh, one thing so for example what happens is if we have one minus c i'm not sure if we still remember this is a power series okay if absolute value of z is less than one and what, what does that mean what does that mean is uh, um what does that mean is one one over minus i'm sorry uh when z is less than one one over one minus c is greater than this guy okay or, or we just write down it here okay the reason is because if z is uh if z is um less than one if we add up all the rest of the entry it's not gonna surpass this quadratic term and now we just use it here okay so when rho k is small enough uh, we can make the following estimate that is uh, we just change this to one plus mu squared divided by 4m rho k okay and now if we think about it we just multiply this one over rho k uh, here, and then this rho k will cancel. So that's a trick. Okay. And we're almost there. So if we have, if we have capital T that iteration, so what does that mean? If we think about it, if we have this inequality. This inequality represents an, a recurrent relation. We just use it. So we just use it repetitively. So this is uh, one nova um, rho k minus one plus another copy of this term. Okay. The reason is because this one, this one, is great is greater than or equal to one over rho k minus one plus this term. So we we just exploit, we use. So let me um, let me add more remark. So so this one is um, use this recurrent inequality repetitively, part of my English, repetitive. Okay, we get this and, and we, we just use it on and on. Um, and we have, okay, essentially um, this implies if we have, if we have a, a capital T iteration, so number of uh, iterations, is capital T, then this implies one over rho capital T because we use the capital K as our number of class, but uh, um, in our homework, so we use capital T here. So the one over uh, rho capital T is greater than uh, one over rho zero. So rho zero where rho zero is just uh, our initial guess of the neural network subtract the best possible neural network. Okay, so somehow this one is not a deterministic, but uh, we still just. Uh, I'm sorry. Somehow this one is deterministic, but uh, we still add a uh, a expectation here. Or uh, we can argue that this w zero can be like randomly chosen, but uh, this expectation is not taken with respect to this randomness. Okay, so this expectation is taken with respect to the randomness of uh, SGD. So like, uh, how do we sample our samples? Um, so that's why this term is actually a deterministic, but uh, we can actually still write um, it as uh, like uh, an expectation. Okay, so uh, let me move this.
And now we have, this is plus capital T. So it's mu square divided by four M times capital T. And now if we simplify it, okay. If we simplify it, we just solve for this row of T. So it is a uh, row of T is less than or equal to, we take, uh, we take, uh, we take the derivative, I'm sorry, we take the reciprocal one over row zero plus mu square four M capital T. And this equals, so if we simplify, we just multiply the common uh, denominator. We'll have, this is a uh, four M plus row zero mu square T. And the top is four M row zero. Like we said earlier, this one is deterministic. Let me, let me just add a remark here. So this one is deterministic. Uh, deterministic. The E, the expectation is, uh, is taken with respect to the sampling, the randomness in the SGD iteration, like uh, which sample we choose. Um, that's why this, this guy is uh, deterministic. If it's deterministic, it can appear in the right hand side of, uh, of our like uh, estimate. And what does that, what, what, what is this saying? This is a constant. So M is like an upper bound, like, like we illustrated earlier. M is an upper bound and uh, uh, row zero is like a fixed constant. And what happens is this is inversely proportional. So this is inverse. So as T is big, this term is negligible, which means this is inversely proportional to, so for example, so we can, uh, so into like, uh, not into heuristically. Okay. Which means, this means, uh, So this is a neural network after T iterations of training. And this is our best possible neural network. Uh, this guy is, so I'm using this uh, less and the sim. It means uh, we kind of ignore the constant, you know? So we ignore the constant. We only look at the essential part. So the essential part is something like this. So one nova T plus a little constant, okay, when T is large. So this is, this is, a, this is like a one over iteration rate. So this is called, one over number of iteration rate of SGD. So if we choose, um, so th this actually means, this actually means we should set our step size or say the learning rate. So um, learning, where's our learning rate? Uh, oh, right here, okay. So this is our learning rate and, uh, um, and our learning rate is mu divided by two m times uh, this uh, this error. So um, so this implies our alpha k uh, can be set as so we we just uh, alpha k we just plug in this formula all right so we plug in this formula and that is alpha is we just set this is like a set it's not essentially like a um, This is not essentially, like we have to set uh, the alpha K to be exactly this value. This is, uh, I wanna remind us is this one is nothing but uh, an estimate, all right? So, and the, uh, okay. 
So this is a big O of uh, one over T. Um, oh, sorry. My bad. This is, uh, this is K. So if alpha K is this, uh, this is one over K. Um, this tells us that uh, we should set, we should set our learning rate to be one over the number of iterations. So that, that's what uh, this uh, tells us. And now let me talk about uh, my experience of a training like uh, neural networks and what is an indication that we should use bigger or smaller learning rate. So this is the example. So a typical, so a typical a gradient decent loss function. Okay, what, what uh, a gradient decent looks like is uh, the gradient decent first, it's gonna be linear. So this is log of loss function, okay. And this is our number of iterations. So initially, initially we'll have a linear convergence and then it slows down to a sublinear convergence. So this is gradient descent. And stochastic gradient descent normally looks like this in loss function. So if uh, we try our uh, final project, uh, we, we can observe this. Uh... So again, um, we plot this uh, loss in uh, log scale. And what happens is the stochastic gradient descent will look like this, okay? So initially it decreases and then kind of oscillating. So the loss is like oscillating, it oscillating up and down. Um, we have some sort of a randomness in there and the, it's, uh, um, there is some sort of, uh, so for example, the convergence it has certain variance. It's not, it converges to a fixed value. Um, it converges to something, but uh, in the noise bar. Um, and then, so this is SGD. Okay, so typical SGD. And what is a typical, so, and when we see this, Sometimes, and most of the times when we reach here, we haven't reached our, you know, and we are actually far away from our best, uh, for example, um, this neural network. And how do we train this is normally, if you look at uh, some big models diagram, SGD, it's something like this. So when it begins to, like oscillate in the noise ball. This is also called the effect of plateau. Okay, so this is this is sometimes called plateauing. Okay, so when it begins plateauing, and this actually can be detected use combining with certain validation strategy. So uh, and we'll learn it how do we code it later. So when we see this plateauing, we decrease learning rate. And we'll normally we'll see a sudden drop and then something like this. Okay. So So here is like a, we first we use constant learning rate. Okay. The constant learning rate is, uh, I would say it, uh, it converges actually faster because uh, if we decrease the learning rate, um, like we derived the last time, if we decrease the learning rate, uh, it, it's gonna take much longer to reach the same accuracy. And uh, um, so right here, normally um, if we decrease the learning rate, you know, after plateau, so after our loss, started to oscillate between a fixed point and we just decrease the learning rate. And in PyTorch, there is a, there actually, there is a scheduler. So this is called learning rate. So this is called learning rate uh, scheduling, okay. 
And what I what I uh, described uh, this learning rate is called uh, is called reduce. So it has a specific name. So reduce underscore on plateau in PyTorch. Okay. Um, and this is uh, this is called a learning rate scheduling. Um, so this is uh, essentially this wraps up the SGD. And for the mini batch, so I want to sketch it because the proof actually quite involves some probability because we want to estimate like a subsample. So um, like the expectation versus overall samples expectation, it requires quite a lot of uh, statistics and probability. I myself is not a statistician. So, and I don't assume everyone have learned, you know, like the multivariate, um, for example, this multivariate convergence of uh, expectation central uh, limit theorem. So uh, I'm not uh, gonna cover it, but we'll learn how to code it like uh, uh, the mini batch. And now let's talk about the midterm. Okay. So today we'll talk about first two problems. Oops. Today we'll talk about first two problems. And uh, on, uh, on Wednesday, uh, we'll talk about uh, some possible uh, PyTorch or Python question we're gonna see uh, in the midterm. So first one is determine the shape of weight matrix associated with each layer. So the key part is we, whoops, yeah. Uh, how do I delete this? Okay, we're in trash. Um, all right, there we go. So um, the key is to know the dimension. So for example, so this is our input. Oops. Okay. So this is our input. Um, and this is our, for example, this uh, hidden layer one. Okay. Um, for example, if the input shape is, let me use MNIST as the example, 784. Uh, for example, the first layer maybe uh, has in, has a shape of a 256, then the weight matrix, okay? So the weight matrix of the input, so this X vector is input plus the bias. So the weight matrix has this uh, shape. It essentially, it maps a 784 vector to uh, 256, okay, plus, uh, so for example, this matrix should be, should have a uh, 784 columns and 256 rows, okay. And this one uh, is 256 rows. So this is bias. All right. Um, and again, in in actual computation, in actual computation, instead, uh, what we compute is uh, so in actual computation. Th this is uh, this is why um, sometimes the dimension counting is uh, com com confusing. Okay. If so if we call PyTorch this a size function to check the weights a size, the PyTorch weight function will tell us W is a 256 by 784. Um, like for example, if we list this weight, so for example, we iterate uh, the models matrix and we uh, list, we print their size and the uh, PyTorch will tell us it's a, a 256 by 784 matrix. However, in the actual computation, okay, so the data is given. So this is the given data, okay? So this is our capital X. What is our capital X is capital X is data and each row represents a sample.
what's happening of each row represent the sample instead, because in linear algebra, a vector is represented normally by a column vector. So what I would like us uh, to be aware of this difference is especially when looking at the presentation versus implementation, the difference is we actually, so in the actual computation, what we do is actually, uh, we, we computed this, okay? And this plus right here, okay? So this plus right here is uh, B transpose is, is plus to each row. of x w transpose okay so for example the x has uh, has uh, uh, has 784 uh, columns so each i'm sorry 784 columns yes each row represents a sample that uh, um, has okay so i have a question i have a question in the chat it asks uh are we allowed to use an iPad for scratch paper? The answer is yes, because we're open book. Okay, but thanks for bringing this up. Uh, and, uh, um, and then if we count the dimension, okay, so this is our X. And by the way, uh, X has capital N and uh, this is capital N is number of samples. Uh, either all samples or in the mini batch. So in the batch, if we have SG, okay. Um, and what's happening is uh, we have, this is N, this is uh, 784. And then W transpose, now it becomes 784 rows, okay. Wait, 784 rows. Yeah, 784 rows, then it's a longer matrix. Okay, yeah, here we go. So um, yeah, I should draw it smaller. So um, 784 okay, rows and uh, two, 256 columns. So, so we have 256 column and 784 rows. And this is a W transpose, this is capital X, okay. And what's happening is this equals so it's like each row is being compressed. So for example, this is 256 columns and we still have uh, capital N samples. All right. This is what happens in the actual computation is uh, in the actual computation when we write down a neural network uh, we, we, we have to bear this in mind. However, if we print the size of each weight, okay, so if we print the size of each weight, uh, PyTorch will tell us we have a 256 by 784 matrix, but we have to be aware that in the computation, it is actually the data matrix times the weight transpose. All right. Um, next question is, uh, so next question is about uh, like the weights. So for example, this question is uh, uh, when we compute the back propagation. Um, so for example, when we compute the back propagation, I'm just drawing some illustration. So for example, this is layer one, layer two, layer three. Um, when we compute the backward propagation, for example, the derivative of the weights associated, for example, from this neuron to this neuron, okay, it only depends on what comes after it. So for example, if we compute the derivative associated with this neuron, it has nothing to do with any, so for example, if we compute this weight, okay, The back propagation is, uh, so for example, the weight associated with these four vector, okay, so uh, we have 
a weight here, a weight here, a weight here, and these four weights will multiply with this. It only depends on, you know, what come after it. For example, this one will go here, and it so it depends on these two and also these two. Okay, so these four weights, all right, will not depend on these two. So that's kind of tricky. And also these four weights will not depend on uh, this. So the thing is uh, um, the computation of back propagation um, only depends on what's come after it. And why, why, um, why this is important is because uh, some of the time, some of the time uh, in many advanced machine learning uh, like uh, application, for example, uh, recently on Kaggle, there are several uh, X-ray, this competition, for example, we have to um, like train our model to be able to tell uh, the X-rays. And many of the network, for example, it has a, a couple of thousands, millions, like I would say about, uh, I think, uh, for example, ResNet 200D, it has about uh, it has about 200 million parameters. That's why it's called a uh, 20 uh, 200D. Is we cannot afford to train all the parameter. We have to freeze certain parameter, and we have to know the dependence of the parameters of the weights we we have frozen. Um, you know, like we have to have a clear mind when we do training of a big model, like which weight we can freeze. So for example, we have to know its dependence and its dependence is the gradient of these weights only depends on like the later and it does not depend on uh, the neuron that's parallel um, in the same layer, okay. And uh, Next one is, does a derivative of element-wise loss uh, sample depend on a sample or depend on the uh, neural networks themselves? So uh, for example, of course it depends on data. Okay, so that, that's like the intuition. So this question is more about intuition. So our samples gradient actually depends. So this is actually yes, all right. So it, it depends on this, okay? It not just depends on the sample weight. It's because intuit, even intuitively, intuitively the quality of data determines how good we can train our network. So that's the intuition. But from the expression, we'll see that uh, this is essentially like, uh, for example, if we have a one layer net, we have something like this, okay? Um, I mean, this this is uh, this is uh, the gradient of simple least square loss. Okay, so it, of course it depends on data. It's because data determines how good we can train our model. And then next is uh, if the network has an n-dimensional input, it has l layers, uh, n neurons. What is the approximate cost in uh, um, in that? So uh, we can then we can refer uh, to the um, to the previous layer, that is uh, to compute the gradient descent of the of one layer, okay? So if our layer is uh, uh, n neurons, okay? And we have, uh, we have some layer. So to compute um, the, the gradient, the, the forward, so the forward, what we need is n cubed times number of uh, layers. And to uh, do back pass, so to do back prop, we have to have another like n multiply with it. And we can refer to the notes when we, where we introduce this big old notation, all right? So let me just quickly, okay, we don't have time, but uh, uh, let, let me just back to this uh, here, but uh, um, on Wednesday. Okay, um, so we'll have our uh, we'll have our um, exam on Wednesday evening, and on Wednesday we'll uh, continue in this review. Okay. So that's it for today. And uh, if you have some quick question, you're welcome to stop and ask.